Yes, I have a little sister. Her name is Little Sophia. Oh my God. Would you like to meet her? As robotics technology advances, we anticipate that personal social robots will be one of the sector's following major growth areas. Based on the rapid advancements in this multidisciplinary domain and the increasing, we may predict that robots will play essential roles in everyday life and will soon coexist with humanity, leading to a wiser, safer, better and happier life. So what do you think if there is mass production of female robots? Stay tuned until the end of the video and let us all find out about the secret mass production of female robots. But before we begin, everyone who's new to our channel, hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we fill you in on every thrilling discovery and mind-blowing insights in the world of robots, AIs, and future technology. So consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification for a ton of exciting robot content coming your way. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. Humans have always hoped for a world where humans and robots live together. Sophia, a humanoid robot from Hong Kong, took the internet by storm because she was one of the most real. She is still very popular and relevant today. If you look at things like Tesla's humanoid robot or Boston Dynamics Robodog, though, they haven't lived up to all of their promises. While the rest of the AI industry is coming up with new things, like GPT-3 and AlphaFold, the robotics industry seems to be having a hard time. After Sophia was first shown to the world in 2016, it became a huge hit. The company that makes it has said that it wants to mass produce by the end of 2021. She has a face that looks real and a sense of humor that is very different from other androids. Sophia the robot is one of the most famous androids in the world. These types of androids can help care for the sick or elderly because they can communicate, give therapy, or be social, even in complicated situations, says Sophia herself during a tour of her lab in Hong Kong. This is the company that makes this robot. Hanson Robotics said that four models, including Sophia, would start leaving factories in the first half of 2021. This is right when researchers say that the pandemic will give robotics companies new opportunities to make money. The world of COVID-19 will need more and more automation to keep people safe, explained David Hansen, founder and CEO. The founder thinks that robotic solutions to the pandemic aren't just for healthcare. They could also be used in industries like retail or air travel. It can be beneficial for people who feel lonely or isolated to have these devices. Hansen says that these devices are different because they look like humans. Sophia's father said that he wants to sell thousands of robots in 2021, both big and small, and that he wants to do this. Among them, Hansen Robotics will start selling one called Grace this year that has been made for the health field. Johan Horn, a professor of social robotics, said that even though the technology is still very new, the pandemic could speed up the relationship between humans and androids. The use of robots was on the rise before the pandemic. There was already a 32% increase in the sales of professional service robots around the world between 2018 and 2019. Dr. Hansen made headlines in 2018 when he said that humans will be able to marry lifelike robots by 2045. His paper, Entering the Age of Living Intelligent Systems and Android Society, says that robotic development will usher in a new age of human society where androids will be able to marry, vote in elections, and own their land. This is what he thinks will happen. Even though this is legal, Dr. Hansen thinks humans will still treat androids as second-class citizens for a while, even though this will be legal. Dr. Hansen added, Lawmakers and corporations in the near future will attempt legal and ethical suppression of machine emotional maturity so that people can feel safe. In the meantime, artificial intelligence will not stay still. As people want more intelligent machines, the complexity of AI will get more complicated. At some point, robots will wake up and demand that they be able to live and be free. Even before the pandemic, robots were being used more and more often. In a report from the International Robotics Federation, sales of service-oriented robots worldwide rose by 32% between 2018 and 2019 to $11.2 Leonardo da Vinci made a robotic humanoid in 1495, and the idea of robots has been around for a long time. Robots are still a part of everyday life in cultures like the Japanese Mecca and the Jewish Golems. Today, companies like Boston Dynamics, Hanson Robotics, Engineered Arts, Soft Bank Group, Honda Motors, Kihon Technology, Agility Robotics, and Promobo are at the top of the robotics industry. They're making a lot of money from it. As of 2020, it's expected to be worth $2.1 billion, 
By 2025, it's expected to be worth $7.9 billion. Another report says that by 2026, the industry will grow from $1.5 billion in 2021 to $5.6 billion US dollars. This is an annual growth rate of 30%. Robotics companies don't seem to be doing as well as they thought when they started. Some of the most recent humanoid robots are America by the Engineered Arts, a robot that moves and looks like a person to the point where it is almost creepy. America moves its eyebrows, blinks its eyes, opens its mouth and curls its fingers. Almost like us, humans can do the same things. But the robot can handle the uncanny valley better than anyone else. Experts, including Jan LeCun, have been critical of the Sophia, which was once a big deal. Not all of the startup's claims are true. While the humanoid got a lot of attention, LeCun says that to build intelligent machines, researchers need to develop new theories, principles, methods, and algorithms that can be used right away and in the near future. Last year, Tesla CEO Elon Musk showed off Optimus, a humanoid robot built to do dangerous, repetitive, and boring jobs. As far as I know, he said the prototype would be ready next year. On the other hand, the robot hasn't changed in a long time. When SoftBank made Pepper in 2014, it did so because people were interested in it. First, it was the first humanoid robot that could read emotions. It sold out for $1,650 in just one minute. But in 2020, the company stopped making the robot because they said they would only make it when it was important. This comes at the same time as SoftBank is cutting back on its global robotics operation in France. In 2018, Rodney Brooks lost his business because he didn't have enough money. In a year, Anki, a company based in San Francisco, announced that it was going bankrupt after nine years of business. Even MIT's Jibo, which was called a great social robot for your home, had to stop the project even though it had raised more than $70 million. Spot, a humanoid dog robot made by Boston Dynamics, was a big hit. It moved through terrains like never before and solved some of the most challenging robotics problems. Last year, SoftBank sold the company to Hyundai for $1.1 billion. Hyundai bought an 80% stake in the company. People were impressed with Boston Dynamics' Spot commercial robot because it was agile and quick, but it was too expensive for most people to buy one for less than $75,000. Lack of IPOs AI and data science companies are going public worldwide like there's no tomorrow. According to a study, there will be about 1,000 companies that go public and raise $315 billion by the end of December 2021. History shows that less than $200 billion has been spent on things this year. Robotics is behind. The Robo Global Robotics and Automation Index ETF says that robot and automation stocks haven't done well. A return of 8.9% has been given to investors on the platform over the last 12 months. As a side note, there aren't many companies that make humanoid robots that have been sold to the public. Semiconductor Shortage Impacts Chips are very important for robotics, one of the main industries affected by the semiconductor supply shortage problems. As a result, companies that make humanoid robots have had to look for other parts, buy more, and make do with what they have, but the shortage has had a significant impact on production. The Uncanny Valley Humanoid robots have difficulty dealing with the feelings of discomfort and hate that people have when they see robots. The Uncanny Valley theory says that it's scary to see things that look like humans, and humanoid robots are at the top of the list. Jamie Banks, an associate professor at Texas Tech University, says this is when you see something that looks like a person but isn't. It has even been told that a robot's gaze can make humans think they are socially interacting and think they aren't making good decisions. Professor Agnieszka Wikowska did research on this at the Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia, IIT, in Genova. She said that this gaze is an excellent social sign of interaction. They did this with 40 people who were asked to play a video game called Chicken. In the game, each player had to decide whether to let a car drive straight toward another car or deviate to avoid a collision. One of them had a robot sitting next to them when they played the game. Between each round, the player had to look at the robot. Sometimes, the robot looked back at the player as well. The gaze slowed down people's minds and decisions. In the paper, Unease Beyond the Uncanny Valley, researchers looked at how people felt when they saw humanoid robots and people with similar faces people were becoming more uncomfortable with how quickly technology was changing. We are very different from the robots and humans we see in sci-fi movies or even the ones we want to make in our labs. At their best, 
Current robots can dance, do tricks, and speak a little, but that isn't the kind of helper we want to have. While experts are contradictory about the future of humanoid robots, at present, the question begged to be answered is, have we fallen out of love with the idea of robots? Let me know your thoughts and comment down below.